subject closely related to calculating shear stress is calculating shear flow. And we calculate shear stress across an uh, interface between uh, two parts. If that interface is a, a glue joint or a joint somehow where uh, the shear stress can be dissipated over an area. If you've got connectors like the nail here or a rivet or a bolt or something along those lines where you've got individually uh, spaced connectors, then what we're interested is, in is shear flow. Shear flow is essentially how shear stress accumulates or shear force accumulates as you move down a beam. The governing equation for shear flow is VQ over I. The, we use the letter little q to designate shear flow. Now why little q? I don't know. There's 26 letters in the alphabet. You eventually have to start reusing some. Uh, to complete the problem, we specify that there's a 200 pound shear force uh, acting on the beam. That these nails that are being used to make the beam can each resist 100 pounds of shear force. And to solve, uh, save some time, I've already calculated the centroid of the beam. It's three and a quarter inches from the uh, bottom face of the beam. And I've also calculated the area moment of inertia. It's 18.16 inches to the fourth. Okay, so we already know V, we already know I. Then there's this Q. Q is the first moment of area. It's an area times a distance. Um, the, you've already worked with something along in this family in the, when you figured out area moment of inertia because there is an area times a distance squared term in that calculation and that's often called the second moment of inertia. There actually is a third moment of inertia but it's not something we use in this class. So let's figure out Q. Q is just an area times a distance and there's one of these A's and one of these Y's for every box that makes up the uh, section we're interested in. We're looking at a shear, uh, shear plane that's right here. It's that interface between the two uh, segments where they're nailed together. And we're interested in either the area above the shear plane or the area below the shear plane. You can use either one for this calculation. And there's only one box in either one of them. It doesn't matter which one you pick. If there was more than one box, if this, this beam had a more complex shape, you'd just be adding up more terms here. The, the method is the same. So let's start by using the area above the shear plane. Alrighty, that's this area right here. Okay, the area of that box is just the base times the height. So the area is four inches times one inch in height, and that's just four inches squared. Now, the distance, y, is the distance from the centroid of this box right here to the centroid of the entire shape. Now, to fill in a couple of numbers here, this distance right there is 0.75 inches, and the centroid of that box is right in the middle of that box, and that's another 0.5 inches. So the total distance y is this number plus that number form that distance, and that's an inch and a quarter. So q, and I'll call this q1 maybe, we'll, let's number this box 1 and that box 2. q1 is a1, y1, maybe make those consistent, 4 square inches times 1.25 inches, and 5 fourths times 4 is just 5 inches squared, inches to the third I should say. Now that's got the units of volume, but it's not a volume. It's an area times a distance. Now I've already told you that it doesn't matter whether you use the box below this shear plane or the box above, you'll get the same answer. So let's just go ahead and show that Q is the same either way. All right, the area of the lower box in this case, A2, is now 1 inch wide by 4 inches high, but we're going to come up with the same answer. Try this one more time. There. So it's still four inches squared. And this distance we're looking at right now is the distance from the centroid of the entire box to the center of the entire section to the centroid of that individual box. That distance to the centroid of the entire 
uh, section is three and a quarter inches. Since that box is four inches, the distance from the bottom there is two inches. Now we have that distance from here to here being 1.25 inches. Okay, so once again we're multiplying 4 by 1.25, so so we get the same answer either way, it doesn't matter. Now because I've got a relatively small uh, board space to use here, I'm going to uh, write the Q over here and uh, erase the rest of the board here. I'll leave that up there. So let's go ahead and finish plugging numbers in here. Q equals 200 pounds, that's V. Big Q is 5 inches cubed, and I is 18.16 inches to the fourth. So let's just do a quick sanity check and check our units. Inches cubed divided by inches to the fourth is going to give me just inches. So I can cross that out, cross that out, I'm going to get pounds per inch. Pounds per inch in this case is the correct unit for shear flow. If you go ahead and uh, figure that out, you get 55.07 pounds per inch. All right, so that's that's the shear flow. Now let's go ahead and find out how far apart these nails have to be. This is just a simple uh, uh, units calculation. If I have 55.07 pounds per inch and one nail can withstand 100 pounds, I can cross units out, and I get 0 0.5, I'll just round that off to 1, nails per inch, so half a nail per inch. Well, I don't know how to put in half a nail. So let me uh, invert that, and this is the maximum spacing, I don't want them any farther away than this, is 1 over 1 over 0 0.551 nails per inch, and if you work that out, you get 1.82 inches per nail. They can't be any farther apart than 1.82 inches. So you might want to play it safe and maybe put them an inch and a half apart. There you go.